Hi, today I'm going to show you the steps it took to build this side table from reclaimed lumber. Ah, the proverbial wood stash. Let's see, it got all kinds of old lumber here. Some of it milled here in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Other stuff salvaged out of old homes. Old buildings have been torn down. We'll see what we can find here to build some furniture out of. I'm gonna start by cutting one by 10 into lengths to glue up for my top panel that will be part of the top and also for a bottom shelf. Wake up to the sound of your fleeting heart. Okay, I've got these pieces ready to miter to create my frame. You can see I've got a, a, an exposed edge where I just ripped this stuff down. I've also got the original edge where you can see the old nail holes where the square nails were. Actually, you can, you can see there there's some bits of square nails still sticking in there. I like to leave these edge exposed. This is what people love to see in this old style uh, Western reclaimed furniture look. Okay, so the inside of my frame there is 17 and a half by 17 and a half. I'm gonna cut these panels 18 by 18. That gives me a quarter inch lip that will fit inside that dado frame that I'm gonna cut with that router. So now using the table saw, I'm going to cut a lip on my two panels here. The little lip will fit inside the groove on the frame. Now you can see I've milled this slip that will go into the dadoed out frame all the way around this panel. Now using a router and a rabbit bit, I'm gonna cut a slot on the edge of that two by frame member to hold the top panel in place. 
Okay, now using a biscuit joiner, I'm gonna cut little notches in my corners to join these together with a biscuit, as in so. You won't see that, of course, it'll be down in the middle of the board. There we are, nice, it'll be nice and strong when it's all glued up. So, you can see my... Everything's dry fit, no glue yet. I think this is gonna come out really nice when it's all said and done here. Now before I glue this up, I'm actually going to take a belt sander and I'm going to put little scallops along all these edges. Again, this is, I want this to thing to look like it was built on the cattle drives uh, 150 years ago coming across the state. Now I'll scalp the edges of the panel as well as the uh, frame members. And I'm going to do one final dry fit here before I glue this, apply glue to my different pieces and assemble this. Take a quick look. Once this thing's done, I will come back with an orbital sander and sand the whole thing. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, uh, we'll go over it later on, get some closest to this thing. Here's a shot of this now, um, glued up. It's just about dry so I can start working on the legs, all the other parts. Okay, I've got some four by four rough sawn dug fur out of the hills in Santa Cruz County area here. Um, one of my cousins, Wood Rat, he's got himself a lumber mill up there, often cuts this kind of stuff. And this is my legs, four by four, make it nice and burly looking. I'm gonna cut these legs on a compound miter, 10 degrees by 10 degrees to give the legs a little flare. 10 degrees by 10 degrees. So I've cut the legs, I've turned the top upside down now. In here somewhere, I want to hang another lower shelf in here. Anyway, this is going to be the general look of the thing. Again, we're looking at it upside down, so I've got to figure out how to mount that lower shelf in there. That's going to take some head scratching. Okay, I've jury rigged up one of these legs at a 45 degree angle so I can use my miter saw to start a curve a notch that'll be on the inside corners of those legs, something that the shelf can sit on there. That's my plan anyway. Okay, I've cut a little curve in the bottom of this leg. I'm gonna clean it out with a nice sharp chisel. Okay, so now <clears throat> on the bottom of this table, located where the legs are going, I've drilled a little quarter inch hole so I can temporarily mount these legs. So now I've got this uh, little table temporarily assembled. I've attached the legs, and now I wanna measure this inside area down there. You can see my little notches in here that that lower shelf is gonna be carried on. It's really hard to accurately measure that until the thing's assembled. And these little bolts will be eventually replaced by something I'll show you in a little while. Okay, as you can see now, I've got my bottom shelf cut 
and I've had to put a compound miter on each corner that will fit into the notch on the legs. Okay, now you can see I've got the lower shelf in. Again, the table's upside down so I can work on it easily. I've tightened the uh, temporary lag bolts that are holding the things in place. Now from the bottom, I'm going to countersink a small hole right in this corner, drill that into there, and secure that lower shelf from below where you'll never see a, a screw. Countersink a little pilot hole. It's just enough to let the head of the screw kind of disappear. Continue around the other corners, and this thing will be all secured. Okay, so here's where we are now. I've got this thing rough assembled. Again, eventually going to replace those lag screws in the top that are holding everything together, but you get the gist of what's happening here. Let's close up at the top a little bit. See the edges? The old nail holes, that scalloped edge where these two joints meet. I'll scallop the outside edge too a little bit. You can see the lower shelf under there. I lightly sanded that before I assembled it. Okay, I'm going to continue scalloping this thing, cleaning it up here. Okay, so here's where we are now. I've got this thing put together pretty good. I'm gonna replace those top little lag bolts there with some big bridge washers and bigger lags. Give it some kind of old time cowboy railroad look, but you're getting the feel of it. I've got 80 grit sandpaper here. A little orbital sander. Well, I noticed I forgot to scout the inside of my edges, probably because I couldn't get in there with the uh, belt sander. So I've got a little uh, knife here I keep in the shop. I made this from an old file actually. I just ground it and glued some leather on for a handle. It works quite great so I'm going to use this to scalp my inside edges. Just take a few minutes. I'm not trying to make this thing look like it belongs in the Smithsonian but more like in a railroad station back in the 1800s during the cowboy drives or the gold rush. And the redwood I used on the top frame was from a house that was built in 1848 here near Soquel, California, out in a little area called Live Oak. It became so dilapidated and full of critters that the county finally relinquished and let the folks tear it down after it being blighted in the neighborhood for years. But anyway, we were able to salvage a few thousand board feet of old virgin redwood out of it and even some dug fur that, believe it or not, didn't have any termites in it. It was kind of amazing for this area. So. Okay, well I put one coat of uh, polyacrylic clear finish on this. I just sanded it with 150 grit. I'm ready to put a second coat on. That may be all it takes. After which I'll replace those uh, lag bolts with uh, something more substantial looking. Second coat of varnish. 
Should be dry in about a half an hour. And here we are, finished product, ready for the home, ski lodge, railroad station. Fun doing it, probably a total with the finish and everything, seven to eight hours. Thanks for watching.